Hello, I'm Connell, and this is The Wild. On today's video, we're going to be looking at amazing animal migrations, specifically looking at five species that make incredible journeys all over the world, including one that's on my new whale wall. So let's begin with animal number one, the amazing Arctic Tern. Starting with the unrivaled long distance traveller, the Arctic Tern. It doesn't look like the most obvious choice for a great migrant, but this is the perfect example of not judging a book by its cover. As the name suggests, Arctic Terns are found in the Arctic. During their northern hemisphere summer, once winter begins to approach, they embark on the longest migration of any animal on the planet. The Arctic Tern flies south, so far south in fact that its end destination is the South Pole, Antarctica. That's a distance of a staggering 50,000 miles, or 80,000 kilometers each way. They live for around 30 years, and in their lifetime they can travel a whopping 2.4 million kilometers. That's the equivalent of not one, or two, but three return trips to the moon, or 60 times around the Earth. Not bad for a bird that only weighs 113 grams, about the same as four AA batteries. Animal two, the gray whale. Gray whales embark on the longest migration of any mammal as they leave their feeding sites around Alaska and travel south towards the warm waters of Mexico, a 13,000 mile round trip. Not all the whales are traveling from Alaska, however. Some gray whales are resident along the North American coast, including here on Vancouver Island. These whales still make a long trip to Mexico, however, just not quite as long as the Alaskan population. They can make the journey from Alaska to Mexico in around 50 days. Grey whales are the only whales that bear their young in the warm, shallow, sheltered bays in Mexico. Males and non-pregnant females also travel south in order to breed. They're in Mexico from January to March. The waters provide a safe environment to give birth and raise their young. The calves suckle milk from their mothers, and grey whale milk is around 53% fat and is designed to give the calf the best chance of surviving the long journey back to the North Pacific. The journey back north is a dangerous trip for young calves who stick close to their mothers. Their mothers are very protective of their young and have been known to fight off pods of orca as they travel north. Number three, the monarch butterfly. The monarch butterfly is a famous and wonderful example of amazing migrations. Eastern monarch butterflies travel from southern Canada and the northern states of mainland USA and travel almost the length of the continent to Mexico. They do this through instinct alone. They migrate to mountain sanctuaries in Mexico where they've never been before. They roost together in their hundreds of thousands. Once winter is over, unlike other species we're highlighting in this video, the monarch butterflies in Mexico cannot make the journey north on their own. Instead, they start a mating frenzy that step by step moves north, ending up in their original locations. In March, monarchs in Mexico breed and lay eggs. It takes monarch butterflies around a month to fully develop into adults. The new generation moves north, so they repeat the cycle. They then lay eggs, which after a month develop into adult monarch butterflies, and this new generation migrates further north. But again, they're unable to make the full journey, so they themselves lay eggs, and the same happens. It takes four generations, over four months, to reach the northern parts of their range. The final generation, called the migrating generation, are unable to reproduce straight away, and are born in the far north of the butterfly's range. Spare a thought for animal number four, the demoiselle crane. This widespread small species of crane is one of the toughest and most daunting migrations in the world. They spend their summer on the grasslands of Central Asia, mostly Mongolia, before gathering in August and September for their journey south to India. This journey is not a long one. In fact, compared to many bird migrations, it's considered pretty short. However, it's so daunting because of a rather large obstacle between Central Asia and Northern India, the Himalayas, the highest mountain range on Earth. Using thermals to gain height, these cranes can reach a height of over 8,000 meters, about the size of Everest. At this height, oxygen levels are severely low and the cranes are starved of oxygen. Temperatures are way below freezing and harsh winds cause turbulence. The crossing is weather dependent and often due to storms the birds must give up and turn around and wait before attempting to cross again. Adding insult to injury, these birds also have to cope with predation from the large golden eagle. The crossing is dangerous but necessary for the crane's survival. And finally number 5, the Christmas Island Red Crab. One of the strangest and largest migrations takes place on the tiny island called Christmas Island every year. The Christmas Island Red Crab makes the journey from the central forest to the beaches to breed. Now this journey is not the longest and it isn't the most treacherous, but it may be one of the most numerous. An estimated 40 million crabs make the move each year, bringing the island to a standstill. 
Prior to human settlement, the crabs would have only had to cope with a forest trek before reaching the sea, but now they must face the island's three roads, and this has meant in prior years many crabs have dived after being squished by cars. The solution is to nudge the crabs in a certain direction as to avoid the island's roads. 20 kilometers of plastic barriers have been erected and 31 crab underpasses installed, and a rather impressive 5 meter high crab bridge has been installed over the road. A crab bridge, not something you see every day. Once at the beach, males and females reproduce and return to the forests. The young crab larvae are washed into the ocean, where over a four week period they develop into teeny tiny little crabs, seen here. They themselves return to the shore, again overrunning the island with millions of crabs as they move into the forests. Thank you for watching this video. For more weekly wildlife videos every Wednesday, don't forget to subscribe. See you next week.